The Wizard of Oz is a timeless classic and is considered one of the greatest films ever made. Released in 1939, the film was truly unique for its time. The health and safety standards back then were basically non-existent. Behind the scenes, this film was an absolute disaster. Hello! Welcome to Brain Spill, the laziest show on the internet. My name is Tank, and The Wizard of Oz was released in Technicolor, and at the time was a truly standout film. And this film has truly earned its place on the history of the silver screen. But to get here, an entire year of filming was necessary to get the film shot and ready for release, which was certainly trial by fire for many involved. Primarily due to some of the dangerous or fatal things some of the actors had to do on set, which by today's standards would be much more heavily regulated, with various laws, standards and expectations as to what a professional film studio should abide by. If you have a dangerous scene which could result in an actor being injured, then you would get a stun double for someone that's trained to do it. The Wizard of Oz isn't just limited to injuries of actors on set, as there were some much more sinister things happening there, and that is what we're going to be exploring today. Get ready for me to ruin a timeless classic. Okay, so where do we even start here? Well, the costumes for one is a great example. They were impressive for their time, and when you saw this colourful cast of characters, you would know instantly that this was the Wizard of Oz. However, to achieve the looks of the costumes, some rather interesting design choices were made. The Tin Man, for example, needed extensive makeup every time that he was due to be on set. Makeup which was in fact found to be toxic to the actor Ebsen. The original production had a big challenge with the costume, and they did several tests before they decided to use the final design. Ebsen suffered a reaction as a result of the aluminium powder used for the makeup. Shortly after this, he was even admitted to hospital as he was in a very critical condition as a result of the toxic makeup that was applied to him. This eventually forced him to leave the project, and Jack Halley had to take over. The studio, in a very underhanded move, let the replacement actor believe Ebsen had been fired from the project, and allegedly changed the makeup to an aluminium paste instead, which had a layer of grease paint underneath it. The only problems were an eye infection, but largely was able to complete the filming of his parts as the Tin Man. It's one thing for a temporary injury to occur when filming, but this was a very serious incident. One of their actors had almost died, and then suffered from lifelong health and breathing problems as a result of the makeup. The actor that played the Scarecrow, Ray Bolger, had some minor injuries when he was taking off the mask, as this caused some scarring to his mouth and chin. One of the big problems that he reported with the mask was that it wasn't porous, so it was effectively trapping him in his own sweat, meaning that he couldn't breathe very well when wearing the mask. And probably one of the more outrageous costume choices made was for the costume of that of the Cowardly Lion, as back in the 1930s, synthetic hair was not really a thing. So, if you wanted to make a lion costume, you had to source the hair from somewhere. And, well, if you're making a lion costume, you're going to need to get the hair of an actual lion. Because of this, they had one costume. One lion costume. Not only because I can imagine it's quite expensive to make the costume, but to maintain continuity, they use the same costume throughout the entire filming process. This means that the actor who was wearing the costume, called Bert, wore a heavy lion suit under the intense studio lights. This caused many occasions of him on set, having heat exhaustion and passing out, having to be carried off set whilst wearing the costume. This was expanded on by cinematographer Harold Rossen. This proved to be impossible, as each available lion hide had very particular hair patterns, swirls, coloration, scars, abrasions, fur loss, etc. that were unique to the one animal, and the only solution was for actor Bert Lair to primarily wear one costume throughout the filming, and for stunt and stand-in performers to wear another. As a result, after each long day of filming under early and unbearable technicolor lights, the Lair Lion costume had to be placed in an industrial drying bin overnight, so that the perspiration could be dried before the next production day. 
Now, this one is pretty bad, although I can kind of cut them a bit of slack, mainly because they didn't really have the technology to make synthetic costumes back then, so they just had to go with what they worked with. However, the problems with the costumes of the Tin Man, for example, could have been avoided if there was a little bit more foresight. Well, the costumes were not the only problems that the actors had on set, as the props and the pyrotechnics used were also a big concern, and they could very well be in the line of fire. Literally. The infamous scene where the Wicked Witch disappears into a fog of smoke required the effects team to start a fire after the witch disappeared. The problem was, they started the sequence of fire on set before actor Margaret Hamilton was able to safely exit the set, which resulted in her broom and hat catching fire. I mean, you could say this was a wardrobe issue, but no, they literally set her on fire on set. This sounds like a pretty avoidable thing. Scalding her chin, the bridge of her nose, her right cheek, and the right side of her forehead, the eyelashes and eyebrow on her right eye had been burned off. Her upper lip and eyelid were badly burned. I mean, I know it's the Wicked Witch of the West, but she doesn't deserve third degree burns, and the actor certainly doesn't. As a matter of fact, it reportedly took her six weeks to recover from her injuries and apparently held off suing the studio on the basis that she wanted to work again. Which, to be honest, given the times, I don't blame her. You would think that the studio would have learnt their lesson from the incident, but no. Because after she returned to set, they asked her to partake in another scene which would require her to be in close proximity of, yes, more fire. After suffering injuries last time, she refused and her stunt double reluctantly agreed to take her place in the scene instead. So, I'm going to give you a moment to think about what happened in this scene. Had the team truly learned from their mistakes? Was there not going to be any further injuries knowing what happened last time? Would everything go off without a hitch? Well, yeah, not quite. Things went so badly in fact, the stunt double's costume caught fire and they had to spend 11 days in hospital. And it just goes to show that Margaret Hamilton had a very good reason to not want to do the scene again. Now, the film uses a lot of effects to achieve things which at the time were revolutionary. As the 1930s didn't really have anything like CGI, the studio had to resort to making all of their effects on set. So when it comes to Dorothy waking up in a field covered in snow, the team needed to make a decision on how they were going to make snowfall occur. They decided to sprinkle fake snow on the actor when she wakes up in the field. Now, I know what you're thinking, how could this scene possibly go wrong? They are literally just sprinkling fake snow on the actor. That sounds pretty harmless. Until I tell you what the fake snow was. Now, out of all the decisions made, including the costume designs, the pyrotechnics on set, this might be just the most troubling of all. The snow they used was actually asbestos. In the 1930s, this was actually the norm for fake snow used in Hollywood, and The Wizard of Oz was not the only film to adopt the use of pure asbestos in these scenes, as it was used widely even knowing the health risks posed by this. The Wicked Witch's broom was also made up of asbestos, as well as the Scarecrow's costume which was worn almost every single day of filming. The use of asbestos was only removed from general use in the 1970s, despite the known risks it posed, meaning that for years, people were put in harm's way simply to achieve movie magic. The decisions made clearly flaunted in any health and safety, and there basically wasn't any until more recently. Many actors complained about the poor working conditions and miserable pay they received, as behind the scenes, things weren't really going too well. This, of course, all sounded terrible, and it does make you wonder why the team didn't simply up sticks and walk out. Well, something you have to bear in mind is at this time, America was going through the Great Depression, and even though there was all these very clear health and safety problems which people shouldn't have been working with, if people wanted to work and carry on earning a living wage, they had to stick it out. They really didn't have a choice at the end of the day. I imagine a lot of people would let things slide knowing that they could hold down a job. It's a sad state of affairs that the cast had to put up with these things, but at the very least, it's instances like this which better informs the future as to these pitfalls 
and the sorts of protections that people need to ensure that these problems don't happen again. So yes, this film did have a lot of problems, and although behind the scenes there were a lot of issues, I guess at the end of the day it did produce a timeless classic. We just need to bear in mind what was sacrificed to make that happen. If you liked the video, be sure to like and subscribe. If you want to be notified as soon as I upload my next video, be sure to hit the bell button. And if you've got any ideas for what topics you'd like me to discuss next, let me know down in the comments below. As always, sources used in the video will be in the description. Right, all I know is that for my next Halloween costume, I need to make sure that I avoid Tin Man makeup, that my costume doesn't have asbestos in it, and that I don't make it out of real lime fur. So, come to think of it, Dorothy's costume might just be the safest of the lot. I'll see you guys in the next video. Fantastic.